threatening, man, Pastor Bill. And this church here has been such a great home to us, amen. Amen. Had a lot of times we were over across the street, amen. Just had a great time in the Lord, amen. So God brought us back together again, amen. Amen. And we thank God for that, amen. I want to ask my praise and worship leader, she'll just come and sing a song, and then we'll go right to the word of God, amen. It's my sister, Zaniah Augustus, amen. She's one of my most faithful members, amen. Wherever I go, she comes. And her mother, Evangelist Nicole, is there with us as well. But we'll introduce you to them later, but we're going to go right to the praise and worship song. Take a picture. Amen. <laughs>
got a special treat tonight. Brother Lambert is <coughs> from when I first got into ministry. Uh, and we'd have fellowships and have him come over and play and just share some uh, times with us and food and whatever. So he's a good friend of this church. Uh, he's going to tell you a little bit about it after he finishes preaching. Um, he's going to share about his ministry and the burden they have and uh, what they're looking to do. And uh, we'll have a little bit of question and answers if you can stay uh, that we're trying to help them out a little bit. So as God leads, and I want to give the brother as much time as he can. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah. Amen. Truly, we thank God for another opportunity to be in this house. Amen. 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 God's been so good to us, and we know he does love us. Amen. Yes. The Bible tells us that he loves us, doesn't it? Yes. It said that he first loved us. Amen. Yes, he did. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. So we know that God loves us. Even sometimes we don't love him the way we should. Amen. I heard uh, Pastor Bill said sometimes we fall short, don't we? Yeah. Amen. But thank God, God is always faithful. Even when we're falling short, he still loves us. Isn't that amazing? Amen. What kind of love is this, amen, that God has for us? Amen. So we want, we're not going to prolong the time. We want to go right to the word of God. If you have your Bibles, we're going to turn to Judges chapter 16. And we'll be reading verses 1 through 4 there. And then we'll be looking at John 4, verse 15 through 18. Amen. Judges chapter 16, yep. verses 1 through 4. And then John 4, 15 through 18. Amen. When you have it, just say amen. 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 Page 2 through 10. Praise God. We're going to read in your hearing. Amen. Judges chapter 16, at the first verse, amen, I'm waiting for some folks here, amen, we're amen. Amen. going to wait for one another, amen, amen. praise God, <laughs> I want you to see it for yourself, praise God what the word of God has to say, how many know the word of God is true, amen, amen. Yeah. amen. Right. I know this is a Bible believing church, so yes, I know you believe that God, the word is true, yes, amen, 16th chapter of Judges, first verse says, one day Samson went to Gaza, where he saw a prostitute. He went in to spend the night with her. The people of Gaza were told Samson is here, so they surrounded the place, and they lay in wait for him all night at the city gate. They made no move during the night, saying, At dawn, we'll kill him. But Samson lay there only until the middle of the night. Then he got up and took hold of the doors of the city gate, together with the two posts, and tore them loose, bar and all. He lifted them to his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill, that faces Hebron. Here's the problem. Sometime later, he fell in love with a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. Amen. Turn your Bibles to John chapter 4, verse 15 and 18. And it reads, The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. And Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thy hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and whom thou now hast is not thy husband, in that saidest thou truly. Amen. 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 Just for a quick minute, amen, we want to look at a topic, looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> amen. And the subtopic would be, God is love. Amen. Yeah. God is love. Amen. As we uh, look at, at the story of, of Samson in the book of Judges, we find out, if you know the story a little bit, of, that he was set apart for God's service. Amen. God had ordained him. And from birth, he, the mother was given instructions that a razor shouldn't go to his head. And he should not partake of wine and, and to partake of the things of the world. I mean, when God sets you apart, you should look different than the world. Amen. And what happens is that sometimes we... We say, okay, Lord, I'm, I'm going to do what you tell me to do, but then we want to hold on to what we want to do. And Samson was one of those, amen, because God had ordained him to be able to go out and fight the Philistines. Yeah. He was going to be the deliverer for Israel because the Philistines were constantly harassing the people of God, amen? Yeah. And God raised up a leader. But, you know, when your leader gets confused and starts looking for love in all the wrong places, he can end up in a place that's not that's not in, the, in line with what God's will is for them. And we see that this is what happened to Samson. Samson was 
He, he loved, even if his parents were a little puzzled. He went to him and he says, can I marry this woman? He says, is there not anybody in Israel that you could marry? And he said, no, I want that woman. And he just, he was looking for love in all of the wrong places. And we have, you know, we can look at Samson's story and say, boy, Samson was, was a dummy. You know, he, he, he got up, then he hooked up with Delilah, and, and he, then he told his secret, and we know the end of Samson was she cut his hair because he told her the power was in his hair. But the reality was it wasn't in his hair. It was in his obedience to God. If he had been obedient to God, amen, he would not have been in that position. That's right. Amen. But he was looking for love in, in places that, that, that he should have been looking for God. Amen. amen. That's where true love is found. Amen. In God. And we see him, he gets to this place with Delilah where he ends up losing his strength. And he, not only does he lose his strength, he lost his eyesight. And they said they poked his eyes out. Yeah. And they began to make fun of him. Amen. And we know that the good part of the story is that at the end of the story, we find that Samson repents. How many know God hears a repentant heart? Amen. Yes, amen. The scripture says that if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you yes, your sins. Yes, right. Right. Isn't that a wonderful, this is the type of love we were saying about. Amen. Uh -huh, amen. This love that Jesus had. I heard the brother talking about the love of God. Amen. The love of God surpasses all things. Yes, amen. But when we're looking in the wrong place trying to find love, we end up in some horrible places. And this man, Samson, found himself in a horrible place. And what I want us to understand is that the scriptures were written for our example. We should not allow ourselves to get caught up in situations. We're looking for answers and love in places that we shouldn't be at. You know, the scripture in, in Psalm 1 says that, it says, walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. Amen? Yes. Don't sit in the seat of the scornful. You know, he's telling you to, to walk in a certain way. Walk circumspectly. Look to God. Because that, if you really want to be loved, that's where the love is at. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Amen. Aren't you glad that he went to the cross? Amen. And especially as we approach this time of Advent of Resurrection Sunday coming up next week. Amen. It's amen. the time for us to remember what Christ did for us. Amen. We, yeah. This morning we were talking about he had to go into Jerusalem so that he could go and face the cross. You know, he came in in victory and everybody was shouting his praises, Hosanna, Hosanna. But the reality was he had an appointment with the cross. Because he was Emmanuel, God with us, the one who was come to save us from our sins. He had to go to that cross. Yes, and I don't know about you, but I said this morning, I'm glad he went. Amen? Amen. But had he refused and said, I'm not going, we would not have a Savior today. But we thank God he loved us so much that even when he was on that cross, that he looked down through all these generations. Here we are in 2015. That was over 2,000 years ago. And guess what? He saw you. And he saw me. Yes, and he said, I can't right. come down because Lambert's soul needs to be saved. And whatever your name is, you can say the same thing. Jesus wouldn't come down because he loved me so much. Yes, praise Amen. God. And what we Amen. have to understand is that God wants us to walk in a place where we can find the right love. Amen. And I'm not uh, telling you that you everybody wants relationships or, or some sort of companion in your life. But you got to do it God's way. See, Samson did it his way, didn't he? Yes, he, he was did. going to, with the enemy. There was a movie I was sleeping with the enemy. He was sleeping with the enemy. And the enemy ended up causing him to lose his place in God. And we have to be very careful that we walk in a way, walk circumspectly, amen, redeeming the time, knowing that the time is short. Yes, amen. Because yes, so God is. is about to come back. I don't know about you, but I can see the signs all around us. If you look around and see what's going on in our nation and around the world, amen. we know that Jesus is standing there saying, is it time yet? Because he's ready to come to his people. And I don't know about you, but I can't wait till he shows up. <laughs> the Bible says that when he shall return, we shall see him as he is. Amen. For we shall be like him. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm waiting on my transition. Amen. So that's the one that we need to love the most. If you love God first, God will bring you what you need. Yeah. The other scripture we went through in John 4 was about a woman in Samaria. First of all, you have to understand the, the, all the uh, particulars around who she was. She was a Samaritan. And Jewish people at that time saw Samaritans as half-breeds. And they didn't really associate with them. And, but yet Christ said before he got to Samaria, he said, I must need to go into Samaria. See, because he knew there was going to be a woman at a well at around 12 o'clock. And he told him, y'all go get some food. Because he knew his disciples were going to say, Master, what you doing talking to that woman? Huh? Amen. But God knew her heart. God knew that she had some redeemable qualities. Amen. Yes. But she had been looking for love in the wrong places. The, the Bible says she had five husbands. Would you 
says she makes a mistake. She went in the wrong direction. Amen. When you get when you divorce five times, Elizabeth Taylor or seven, you know, but the reality is that <laughs> when you look at this, this story, you begin to understand this woman was looking for something. Amen. And then he told her, he said, now you didn't get married again, and the guy you with now he ain't your husband. So now she's with somebody else and wasn't even on, wasn't even married to them. Why? Because she wanted to be loved. And I come to tell you that most of us just want to be loved. Yeah. But I come to tell you, we're looking for love in the wrong places. Because if you love God first, God will bring everything else into perspective yes. for us. Yes. So she's at this well, and she comes. And the first thing she said, why are you talking to me? Because she didn't understand that. But what she didn't understand was the love that surpasses all understanding. Christ had love, amen, for everybody. Even though it wasn't time for the Gentiles, he still loved them, amen? Yes. And so he began to tell her, he said, give me some water to drink, yes. amen? And the lady says, uh, she says, she, he says to her, he, something about, I, I'm going to get confused, but I'm going to stop right there, amen? I'm going to say to you that when, when she asked him and he began to interact with her about the water, he said, I got some water. Amen. That I can give you, you'll never thirst again. She said, give me that water, please. Yeah. Amen. Because she was always looking for that. That's what she was really looking for. A love relationship with a man, amen, who didn't want something else from her. Amen. Mm -hmm. This was a man who loved her just because of who she was. Amen. Who loved her enough to yeah. forgive her of her sins. Amen. Yeah. And when he began to prophesy to her and tell her about herself, she said, truly, this is a man of God. Yeah. Truly, you must be the Messiah. He said, you're looking at it. Yeah. Amen. Jesus has showed up. Amen. And when Jesus shows up, amen, he will reveal himself in your life. But you have to be willing to let him in. The Bible said he not he stands at the door and knocks. Knock. Amen. He's asking you to let him come in. He's a gentleman. He don't kick doors down. <clears throat> let me in here, Bill. I need to talk to you. No. He wants you to open the door up for him. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so when he opens that door, God will move in a miraculous way. Yeah. Hallelujah. The Bible says this woman got so excited that she left her pots at the at the well and ran back into the city. And she began to tell him, I have found him. I found the Messiah. Yes, for he told me everything that I've done. Praise and the people began to believe because of her testimony. But I, what I love about the story is that by the time they get to Jesus and they come back out there and they begin to talk to him, they said, listen, we believe, we believe because of what you said, but now I don't have to believe that anymore, but we see it for ourselves. We've seen that this is the man of God. Mm -hmm. See, because they felt the love that only God can give. Yes. God is love. Mm -hmm. Saints, God is love. And he loves us no matter where we're at and how many times we mess up. God still loves you. As long as you have breath, you have a chance to get it right. See, but we're looking for love. We're looking for everybody else's approval. Amen. I always tell people, you know, I, as, a, as your pastor, my approval is not going to get you to heaven. Yeah, you right. got to get God's approval. Amen. Yeah. I can't go to the president of the United States and I need you to approve me. I need God's approval. Amen. 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 Because Amen. he's the only one that's going to be able to take us to where we need to be. Amen. I want to be able to see him in peace. I don't want to hear those words when you stand before God. The Bible says it's going to be a day of judgment. Amen. And so on the day of judgment, I don't, I don't want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Come into my rest. Or will you hear these words, depart from me, you work for iniquity. I never knew you. Yeah. Amen. Love God first. And then if you want a mate, God will send you a mate. Don't go out trying to find one. Amen. Amen. But the Bible tells me, especially a woman, it says a man finds his favor when he finds a wife. He finds a good thing, doesn't he? Amen. Yeah. So what we have to do is that you have to be found, young lady. And young man, you need to find her. Amen. <laughs> but you need to find someone who is equally yoked together with you. Yeah. Amen. Otherwise, you'll find yourself being pulled in different directions. Love God. Love him first, and everything else will fall into place. Yes. Amen? Amen. Real love. That's what you want. Turn your Bible to 1 John 4, 7, 8, and we're going to end right there. Praise God. And we're just going to read, read in this scripture. 1 John chapter 4. Put my glasses on. I won't see it. God. And we're going to read verses 7 and 8 in your hearing. See, after God, we get to experience the love of God, then we have to learn how to love one another, don't we? Yeah. The Bible says that, you know, the, the greatest second command is to love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. Love God first, and then love your neighbor as yourself. And listen to what the writer John wrote. He said, Beloved, let us love one another, for love 
is of God. Yes. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Amen. Listen to the eighth verse, but this, this is very indictment here. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Yes. Amen. Thank God you, bless you. Amen. 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 Praise God. I hope you got something from the word. Yeah, we did. Amen. Amen. Yes. That's the word. You just get warmed up there, bud. Yes, sir. That's awesome. Well, I asked Brother Lambert to come because he contacted me, and uh, they had been meeting at a, what, tell me what it was again, where you guys were meeting at? It was quality inn. At a quality inn, and uh, they're looking for a, a better situation until they can get a building, and uh, asked us if uh, our, our buildings would be available. So uh, I presented it to the church, said what we'll have him ask any questions you may have. He's going to tell you a little bit about his ministry and answer any questions you may have about it. And then we're just going to pray about it and see how God leads. So come back up here, brother, and uh, Amen. any questions you might have about it, and uh, just share a little bit about your ministry. Praise God. First of all, the name of the ministry is A Leap of Faith Anointed Ministries. Amen. And uh, Amen. at the time that I knew Pastor Bill, I was at a church in Burlington. Amen. But the Lord saw fit to call me out. Amen. Yeah. And it took a leap of faith. Which that's where the name comes from. Amen. To actually <laughs> leave an established church and then to go out and to start another one. Amen. It started at our home in uh, November of 2008. Started with two members. And then the next four members came. Four more came. And then four more came. And then we realized my little condo was not big enough to handle the size. And if there was any more growth, we needed to branch out. So we were able to go to the Quality Inn in Maple Shade, and God gave us divine favor there. And I always tell the story because when I went there, I was thinking, well, I shouldn't be going here. I should go to the, out to the Western or out to the Holiday Inn. But the Lord directed me right there. And from that day forward, we were there for six years. And God knows we would probably still be there. We had great favor there. And what I mean by great favor is that we didn't have to take our equipment out. All we had to do was put it on, on a little... Uh, cart and they would put it away for us so then on Sunday we'd come in, it'd be right there, we'd hook it up and we finish, do the same thing, just put it back on the cart and they just gave us, the Lord gave us divine favor there. However, the owner decided he was going to sell it, the building and uh, he wasn't selling to another hotel chain which we probably could have stayed there a little while longer but we had got pretty comfortable there after six years, you know, you get pretty comfortable in one place. Yeah. Amen. But God knows how to make to get you started. Amen. Yeah. And you know, I often think about in Jerusalem, had there not persecution had not come, they would all have stayed in Jerusalem. They never would have took the gospel out. But God allowed persecution to come. And sometimes he has to push us. And that's what he did with the selling of the quality end. Not only they uh, like I said, they're not selling it to another hotel, they actually turned the whole building down and selling it to a car dealership. All those, that beautiful building is just going to be torn down for cars to be parked on the lot. Uh, but that's their business. And I understand the owner. The owner said I got three times more than what I paid for it. So I can't challenge him or say, well, get mad at him. Oh, I just fell in a chair for you. That's all right. Okay. Take your time, sis. Here.
which they would always say, Pastor, keep coming, please keep coming. And they, would, they were so appreciative. And when they heard that we were no longer going to have a place, they went to the management of the place and said, we want Pastor Lambert and his congregation to be able to come here. And so we've been able to go there. And the beautiful part is that there's no, no fee. Because I tried to call the management. They said, no, we can't take money from outsiders. They said, we're doing this. You're bringing a service in to, our, to the residents here. And so the Lord did provide. We didn't, I, I, told, I kept telling the saints, I said, we're not going to be homeless. Amen. Amen. We may not be where God wants us at yet, but we're not going to be homeless. But at the same time, you're supposed to be busy looking around, seeing what's available. Amen. And so we spoke to a church in Burlington. They are pretty open with it. And I called Pastor Bill, and he said he would pray. Amen. And that's what I love about Pastor Bill. He didn't just say, oh, sure. He said, we need to pray. Amen. Amen. And I didn't hear from him a long time, so I said, well, Lord, you must have said no. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but then he called and said, hey, I'd like for you to come and, and uh, present your ministry to the people. And what we believe, we are a Bible-believing church. We believe the Bible to be the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we believe it is the power of God unto salvation. Amen. If the gospel's preached, I, I'm not one who preaches uh, from theology or from philosophy. I believe the word, If you, I'm a word preacher. And as you see, I had to stand the word. I can't go too far away from the word because if, it's, if I go too far away from the word, I miss the mark. Amen. For it is the gospel of Jesus Christ that saves people's lives. Yes. And so this is what we do. We believe that you should live a saved life. You should live a holy life. And we believe and teach that to all of those <coughs> that are in our, part of our membership. Uh, the membership has fluctuated up and down over the years. Right now we're probably about 19, 20 people. Amen. Amen. But, you know, I don't worry about numbers. See, because if I can tell them we're two are gathered in his name, he'll be in the midst. Yeah. Amen. And yeah. you see that when God's yeah. ready to expand the ministry, he will. But for right now, we just want to keep the ministry going because we do prison ministry. Amen. We have some uh, prisons that we go into, and we also are able to go into the seniors. Amen. So we, we're looking to just bring souls into the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. And we took a leap of faith. Amen. And actually, that was just going to be the name, Leap of Faith. But you know when you do those searches, we found out there was a church out there already called Leap of Faith. So I had to add in the anointed. Because we definitely need God's anointing. Yes. So that, that fit perfectly. Leap of faith, anointed ministries. And we thank God for where he's taken us. Uh, and so far, we've also been blessed with a van uh, that's paid for. I've got to tell you all that. Today. We paid it off. Amen. It's paid off. Amen. We only two years we paid it off. And we thank God for his favor in that area. So God has been good to us. And we're just looking to see where we can go and continue to grow until the Lord said, this is where I want to plant you. See, I, I believe this, that God gives every pastor a pond to fish in. And you, I don't want to take your fish out of your pond. So I believe God has a place for me. I just have to wait on it. Like Abraham, he told Abraham to go out. And he said, I'll show you where you should go. And that's why I'm, I'm in prayer mode now. Lord, where do you want us to go? And if he says we're going to go, that means he's going to make the way of me. Yes. Amen. So just keep right. us in prayer. That's what we have. Anybody have any questions? I'm here to answer anything you might have. Yes, sir. First is, uh, praise God for your your uh, message tonight. It's very good. Yes. Uh, I want to get into uh, how, how you started or how you came to your faith. As you mentioned in your message, you know, uh, Jesus doesn't, he's a gentleman. He, he just doesn't, you know, not slightly. Did That's right. he have to knock lightly or did he have to break you? Well, well, tell us about Let me tell you about God. me. Amen. <laughs> I can tell you, God had to break this man. Amen. Because I, I was hard headed. And my mother used to always say, boy, you were so hard-headed, and you don't listen, amen? And I was a <laughs> rebellious kid, because always, my mother and father were saved. They raised us up in the church. This is how I learned to play the guitar. My father was a guitar player in the church, and he taught me at the age of eight years old how to play the guitar. And I used to be in church mad, but they would make me go to church. But I always said, when I get out of this house, I ain't never going to church again. <laughs> The other never was, my mother used to make me get haircuts, and that was the time of the afros. And I said, when I leave this, I ain't never getting a haircut either. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I'm going to church and no haircuts. But you see, I do get haircuts, and I'm in church, amen, because of that seed that was planted in me. But I, I lost my way, brother. I was uh, hooked on heroin for about 12 years. Uh, it took a jail experience for God to straighten my life out. Uh, he allowed me four years in the state penitentiary, 
And doing that whole four years there, and actually God met me in the prison cell. And then I gave my life back to him. See, because Praise God for that. He had a seed in me. My mother planted a seed. Even though I was running like Jonah, didn't want nothing to do with God. But when I got in trouble, I knew to call on the name of Jesus. Amen? Yes. And while I was in that That's prison right. cell, I began to call on the name of Jesus. And God met me there and filled me with his spirit right there in that prison cell. And from that point on, I probably in my third year, my second year in there, I began to teach Bible class. Became part of the chaplaincy wow. ministry. Amen. God opened doors for me. Amen. And I don't know any of you know anything about the prison system. They don't allow you to gather together, go more than about four in a bunch. But I had the whole day room full of people doing Bible class. Because the lieutenant said, that's Lambert. Favor of God. You can't beat it. That's Lambert. He ain't doing nothing but talking about God. Amen. 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 My funniest story about the day room is that's where the TV was. And so the guys would come in who didn't want nothing to do with God. They would turn on the TV and try to drown us out. But God would like build a hedge around us. Amen. Yeah. And then I remember the TV went out one night. And the guy came up and he says, listen, pray and ask God to turn the TV on. <laughs> so God was listening. Amen. But God, that was the period of time that God needed for me to surrender and become all that he wants me to be. So when I came out, Amen. I came out on fire for God. Yes. And so many prisoners, you know, they, they, they'll serve God while they're in jail. Amen. But I, and they used to bring me the Bible. They said, Lambert, here's, here's the Bible. Your boy left his Bible, you know. And so these type of stories are what happened in my life. But God was working on me. He knew how long it would take. See, because that was my first offense. I had never been to jail in my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I get here, and the judge ain't have no mercy. She said, you've been getting away with murder. I'm sure you've been doing this for a long time. And she said, so I'm going to give you some time to think about it. But what she didn't know, what I didn't know, she was God's agent. Amen? Amen. So that God was going to have an opportunity to work in me. Amen. And when I came out, I came to the church where a pastor met me there, came to visit me. And from there, I started going to the church in Burlington. And that's where I met my wife. Amen? Amen. Praise God. God. God brought me a wife. <laughs> Amen? Yes. So you have to be careful while I was looking for love in the wrong places. I was looking for Holly Berry and Beyonce, you know. But the Lord said, this is your wife right here. Amen? Praise God. And, and I thank God we had 12 years going on, 13 years of marriage because of what God has done. Amen? And God then took us out into system pastorship for eight years, and then he called us out into this ministry. Yes, sir? Um, what do you, like, think of your time, like, days, times uh, for your services, like, uh, like, what are, you, what are you leaning towards? You well, <laughs> right now we're just looking. We'd like to stay on Sunday if possible, you know, uh, but I see sometimes it's not always possible with some of the places we, we've looked at. Uh, the only place that we know uh, we could do on Sunday was up in Burlington. Uh, but the other pe people have talked about Saturday. So we are open to different things. Again, prayerfully open because I want to do what the Lord would have us to do. Amen. The only other day that we, we, uh, we do have a Bible class, but as you know, I'm sure you know, Pastor, everybody don't come to Bible class. So they can, we still have it in my home right now mm -hmm. until the Lord sees fit to show us where we're going to be. So really just looking for a place for our morning service right now. So if it was on Sunday, what time, how long do you need and what time do you need? Well, we could, uh, I don't know, you don't want to interfere with your service. What's your service time? Uh, usually, well, the morning service uh, is around 11 and I get done around 12. Mm -hmm. um, that's for this building. That building over there is, is open. Um, you know, like like just you know, you've been over there. You know what it's like. It's oh, yeah. We use that on Wednesdays. So I mean, that that's available unless you wanted to have like later time service, um, like afterwards. Uh, see, the thing of it is, it, it ends at twelve, and then usually we're counting money. You know, sometimes people linger. So that that was to be the only concern I had that uh, I wouldn't want to hold you up. But then the other hand, I I don't want to rush people out of right. here as far as that goes. So mm -hmm. that would be the only thing I was thinking. Yeah. I mean, we've been open to uh, different time frames, you know, I think, like I said, the one church was 2 o'clock, one was 1 o'clock. You know, we're out here. Right. Yeah. 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 So it, it's uh, definitely wanted to present our needs to you tonight and to give you the opportunity to get to know us and to talk to us as well, amen, about any concerns you might have. Um, but that's what we're looking for. We're just looking for a place that we can worship yeah. and be able to worship and also be able to invite other people to come out. You know, where we had the community uh, center at uh, Camden, uh, the residents there kind of take up the space. And so I, I don't even really have a lot of room to invite a lot of folks there yet. But that's okay. But I found out today, and I, and I shared this real quick, and I'm going to ask you a question, is that when we were 
uh, having our service there today, I saw a whole bunch of people just kind of standing outside listening, and the Lord revealed it to me that eventually you keep coming, they're going to come in. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we have nine or ten people that come regularly, but it's, it's a small community room, so we don't have a lot of space to even invite other folks. So that's why we are looking for some other options as well. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, you know, God willing, if he wants you here, uh, that's how it should go. That being said, do you have any concerns? Do you think that you can feel comfortable here? Is there anything that we can do to accommodate you if God leads you in the direction of this church? Uh, pretty much, you know, just the, the fact that you opened the door. That, that's all we need. We need an open door and to have a good relationship. Of course, you, know, you, know, you don't want to be like Lot and Abraham's uh, people fighting one another and they had to separate. You know, we don't want to bring confusion into the church. So all, we, all we're doing is we, we'll come in humbly if you're going to open the door. We don't have any special needs that we have. The only thing, I do have a, a couple that are in their uh, 70s and 80s, but now after seeing my sister in the wheelchair, he has a motorized wheelchair. The access bus can bring him here still, and they can still be a part of the service. So that would be my, and I see this is handicap accessible. That's what I was saying. Mm -hmm. So that was been the only need that we had, to be able to make it handicap accessible. Yes. Uh, do you have a bus that you pick up people, or do people just come on their own? Well, actually, I have a bus. But I only pick up those who don't have vehicles right now. Yeah. Amen. When I bought the bus, though, I was uh, also doing some uh, work at, in the uh, halfway house in Camden. And I was working toward trying to get inmates that I could pick up and bring to service. So that was the real reason I purchased it, because I wanted to be able to provide these, these souls an opportunity to be in, in a place where they could hear the word of God and hopefully give their life to Christ. But we do have a van. In fact, we're using our van uh, in May. We're going on a trip. So we're actually going out to Lancaster to see Noah. This is the Noah. Yeah. Praise God. So we, we use the van quite regularly. But I only have three or four people I pick up now because these are the uh, people who don't drive vehicles at all. Should the Lord bring us together to meet at the same time but in different buildings, the only thing I could foresee would be a parking issue. Mm -hmm. We need somebody to manage the parking. That, you know, get everybody parked that needs to be parked and into the church right. on time kind of thing. Because right now you're looking at about five, six vehicles. That's it, you know. Yeah. 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 About six vehicles. Because we got families, you know, this is the Augustus family. They come in their van. There's five of you on there, right? Or six of you. Five of them. And there's another family. There's five of them. So they are all right, tra sort of traveling together. Uh, the only thing is the van would would be the ones that were picking up a few people who don't have vehicles. Okay. Yeah. That's a, just making an observation. Well, I, I appreciate that because I, I thought about it when I was parking outside a few minutes ago and I said, I wonder what it looks like on Sunday morning. And believe me, all these years I come, I never knew you had a parking lot here. <laughs> I was like, you got a parking lot. <laughs> I've never noticed that before. Mm -hmm. Amen. So uh, basically, we're only looking at about six cars. Okay. And I think we could manage it if God mm -hmm. leaves it. Well, I mean, growth, you got to include growth, too. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Yes. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the growth to grow. Yes, sir. Yeah. So if the times are staggered, it wouldn't be an issue. No. no. Yes. Uh, say uh, we get done and we're definitely out of here by 1230, and you had 1 o'clock. It would be best in the winter because we still have the heat. And you wouldn't be heating over here because that's probably low. Mm -hmm. The heat would still be here. Right. That was one of the things we thought about. That the heat's already going to be on. The air conditioning's already going to be on. So it wouldn't be like it would be an extra expenditure for the church. It, it would already be on. So right. So that was one thing we thought about. That that wouldn't be a problem. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Um, now, was it? Were you looking for just one one service right now? Like like your Sunday morning or two? Right now, until we see uh, if there's going to be a, a bigger response to the uh, Bible class right now. Ever since we left, we used to have it at the hotel. We had two rooms there. One was for service and one was for our Bible class, which was a smaller room and less expensive. Because uh, you had to pay for every time you went there. You had to pay. So uh, what we found is that as we moved from that direction, uh, only a few, I got about six people to show up now for Bible class. So our house can accommodate that for now. But as we were talking about growth, as we grow, right. we, we may need some other uh, time frames or other spaces we might have to talk about it somewhere along the way. Amen. Pastor Bill and Rebecca, I'll hit the hot button issue. Are you two thinking about retiring? 
<laughs> well, unless the Lord tells me to. <laughs> I think I got a few more years left. They're, they're too young. You're too young. Too young. You're too young to be young. First of all, I know no retirement. Uh -huh. I just said there's no retirement for pastors. And you might you might pass the bulk and you still be there, but you're gonna you're gonna be uh, yeah. on on till you die. <laughs> this is a lifelong job. Yes, I'm sure. sure there are some brothers and sisters here that I'd like to see you in your service here. I'm sure we talk with everybody Amen. from the service that can come on in and see your service too. Yeah, sure. If you would, yes, no doubt about it. If you pastor, I don't want pastor to think I'm trying to take his people now, but that, that, that's something we never want. That's why I said we don't want that sort of thing, but definitely you would be welcome to come, of course, to see how we run our services, you know, and you might. Uh, might want to do too. But listen, I believe the more time you spend with God, the better. Amen. Uh, as long as you don't, long you don't neglect your your home first. We believe home is most important. I tell my people that as well. Is that you got to take care of home. You know, and I just tell you a story about my, my praise and worship leader. When it, if she wanted to go, she has a she has a, a a gentleman she likes, and he goes to another church. <laughs> and sometimes he'll invite her, and she'll call me first. The pastor is all right if I go with him today, and I said sure because she's been faithful. And when you have faithful people, I would be wrong to say, no, you better be, you know, you better stay here. But the reality is we have to learn to, to allow people to exercise certain areas of their life as well. It's important. Hope you don't mind me sharing your story. Right. <laughs> Praise God. But uh, the, the main thing we, we want to do is we want to be in fellowship. Amen. Yes. We want to support you guys. Yes. And, and, and y'all can support yeah. us in any way. That's, that's great, too. Because it's about kingdom work. It's not about, uh, I always say, it's not about membership. It's about kingdom work. Yeah. What are we doing to impact and tear down the kingdom of Satan? Yes. Amen. We're supposed to be working together. We should all be on the same page. Yeah. Amen. That's what happens is.